hello shareholders, um, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Reed. I'm Petrotherm's Exploration Manager. Uh, we have also with me today Chris Donaldson, Outback Goldfields uh, CEO. And Chris will talk to you soon about what Outback Goldfields are, uh, are doing and the work on the ground. Uh, but before we get across to Chris, I thought I'd talk to you a bit, a bit about the, the share sale transaction that's occurred between Petrotherm and Outback Goldfields. Before we uh, get into the technical side of things, uh, this is Petrofirm's Firm's compliance statement. I'll draw, I'll draw your attention to, in particular, the JORC information, which has a list of our publicly listed announcements over the last few years, which relate to the technical uh, projects which we've required, which is the subject of the sale, and also in more recent months, the actual terms and, and details relating to the sale transaction itself without back gold fields. Now, just to sort of set the scene here, the reason we have these projects to begin with really lies on the refocus of exploration that's occurred here in Victoria, based on the great success that, that um, Kirkland and Lake have had at their Fosterville operations with the discovery of, of the Swan Zone um, in recent years, where that, that mine was able to discover um, multiple millions of ounces of gold at very high grades in excess of an ounce per tonne. And it's now one of the most profitable gold mining operations anywhere in the world. And that's sort of really put the focus back on, on Victoria, which is you know, historically one of the great world's great mining gold jurisdictions with over 80 million ounces of gold won. And we know from a technical point of view, there should be another 80 million ounces of gold there to also win. So when Petrotherm saw that focus, and particularly there was a lot of interest from North America, because you remember Kirkland Lake are a Canadian, Canadian based company, uh, we started positioning ourselves early in that space. And over a number of years, we've acquired four project areas, uh, which we think are in very high perspective zones, very close uh, and a long trend to major mining centres in the heartland of Victorian gold fields. That, those, that project base has been put together. Uh, uh, then late last year, uh, we came in contact with Craig Parry, who's a, originally an Australian geologist, but has been involved more recently in the capital markets is now based in Vancouver in Canada. Uh, we were put in contact through him by some of our, our larger shareholders and our investment brokers. And Craig's got a very strong track record of raising capital and uh, building companies and had great success in really value adding project portfolios. And we, we could see too that there was a lot of investment interest in the North American and Canadian markets. So we thought we're gonna get a lot more bang for a buck if we actually create a dedicated vehicle that's listed in the North, in the North American hemisphere that will allow, you know, to really allow us to raise the capital and build the team to explore these projects appropriately. Um, so the, the, the vent itself of these projects into Outback Goldfields uh, is a share script deal. We've received over 33 million shares in Outback Goldfields Corp for that transaction. And that represents a major interest. That's collectively over 57% ownership interest in that, in that, in that company. Um, and those shares are going to our shareholders through an in-species distribution. So our shareholders will be able to retain exposure to those projects and uh, participate you know, through the great upside potential that can occur. So it allows the Victorian gold assets to be housed in, you know, in a dedicated vehicle. It's well-funded as part of that sale, Outback Goldfields raise capital. They are looking to raise a minimum of $6 million Canadian they were oversubscribed in just a, in just, within just a few days, and they closed their book at 11.4 million, uh, million Canadian. So they're very well financed. They've got a very high caliber board. I mentioned Craig Parry, who got seated the whole thing, is now uh, Outback Goldfields uh, chairman. And I um, mean, you know, he's had great success with other companies like Skeena Resources, Vizsla, Isor Energy, um, great track record of. of packaging projects, getting them up and running, building a really good management team and an on-ground team to, team to really value add and make new discoveries. So that's what we're about at the end of the day. We want to find another swan zone. So we have that exposure now to the buoyant American and Canadian investment markets. We've got a really good board. They've been very quick at establishing a local office here in Australia. We have a, an office in Ballarat, right in the heartland of the Victorian goldfields. We've been able to acquire some very highly experienced exploration geologists with many years of local experience. We've worked both at Bendigo, you know, the, you know, the center of, of, of uh, gold exploration in, in Victoria and at Ballarat. So they've got, they bring with them great wealth of experience um, in exploration and development. So we think 
the significant upside potential here for our shareholders to participate in this in-species distribution. And we're very pleased to see that Outback Goldfields are out there hitting the ground running, have a rig running down at Glenfine, uh, which is the project to the south. And that rig will run throughout most of the year and, and move north too. We'll have drilling occurring at Urine Green and following on to other, other tenements. And I'll talk, we'll talk more about the technical aspects of those, those projects um, in the, in the, later in the, in the presentation. Just before I hand over to, to Chris, who'll tell you more about Outback Goldfields, I'll, for our shareholders, give you a quick rundown on what the in-species distribution of the shares means to those shareholders. On April the 12th last week, that was the official record date where people needed to be a shareholder in Petrotherm in order to participate in that in-species distribution of those, of those shares. Petrotherm shareholders will receive approximately uh, one Outback Goldfield share for every six Petrotherm shares they hold, or as a ratio that's roughly 0.1676 shares for every Petrotherm share held. Today, April the 20th, uh, that in-species distribution of shares will go out to our shareholders and holding statements will be issued. To provide further background, Outback Goldfields themselves, they are currently trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange. They also are listed on the OTCQB venture market, which is a top tier public market in the United States, and also the Frankfurt Exchange. They have intentions to transition from the Canadian Securities Exchange across to the TSX Ventures Exchange, which should occur in the coming months. Our shareholders will need to um, use a stock breaker to be able to trade those shares um, through the CSC or the, truck, or the TSX once they move across to that exchange. Uh, the other option to them is to use an online investment broker, uh, a good example being in Interactive Brokers, which we show a link here in this presentation, and they're able to register there and be able to set up a trading account and trade on, on a global scale there, those shares. Now I'll hand over to Chris and he'll, um, he'll talk to you more about Outback Goldfields, who they are, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll See you again shortly and we'll talk more about the projects that are the, the technical aspects of the projects thank you very much hi thanks peter um uh, for the introduction here i'm chris donaldson i'm the ceo and uh a president and also a director of outback goldfields uh some of you may have uh known us as scarb exploration we've rebranded in the last a few months so uh welcome it's an exciting time for for us um as we have now acquired the the assets and are, are moving them forward um, and so it's a collective welcome to, to uh, Petrotherm shareholders who, who are now comprising about 57% uh, of our asset base. So the purpose of what I'd like to go through today is to give you a bit of an update of what, what's uh, happened with the company um, since we came into existence in, in October. Um, and then give you an outline of what we have uh, looking ahead here for the balance of 2021. So uh, we also have a disclaimer here. So if you are going to make a, an investment decision, please read this before you do so. So Peter gave you a bit of an outline what we have. Um, we're, you know, never in, in my uh, lifetime did I think I would be able to acquire these, these uh, properties. Um, we have a, a large land package in and around the Fosterville mine. Um, and the credit and, and thanks goes to, to Peter and the Petrotherm team for having the foresight to, to um, acquire these properties a num over a number of years ago. Um, it, it's a hot district right now. There's a staking rush that's going on and we are subject to a little bit of a, a first mover advantage. Of course, uh, the excitement started with, with Kirkland Lake and that swan zone and, and we're hoping to find something similar to that in the, in the area. That, that mine is now the highest grade, lowest cost mine in the world and it's recognized as such, um, this piece of, of uh, uh, geography is, is, is one of the, the hottest in, in, in the world right now. So I think we have a, put together a, a very good team uh, to advance these projects. And it starts with, with uh, the board that we have. Um, uh, Peter mentioned Craig Perry. He's a longtime executive who's had tremendous success uh, recently. And I'll give you a little bio coming up. Um, but we're also following a path of, of previous success. There's been some other companies that have, have in, the, in the area that have launched over the last year or two and have, have had a pretty good um, run, both uh, you know making some discoveries and also in, in, with their share price and so forth. So for you guys, I, th I think you're coming in at a, a, a very good entry point. Um, and you know we'll, we'll, we should have a very steady stream of uh, news and catalysts coming up um, for the balance of the year. 
So a little bit about the board. We got Craig Perry. Uh, as mentioned, he's a geologist originally from Australia. Uh, he moved up to to Canada about six years ago to to start a company called ISO Energy, which was quite successful. And and I met him. At, you know, uh, actually, our children were in, were in school together. Um, and and we've always wanted to do something. He came uh, to me with the, these projects. I, I jumped on it. Um, Craig has had success beyond just ISO Energy. Um, he's a chairman of Skeena Resources, uh, Visla Resources. Gold Bull and, and a few others. Oda Halley, our, our CFO, very experienced CFO. He was previously with Endeavor Mining, Pan American Silver, and Yamana Gold in similar roles. Um, Louis Archambault is, a, is one of our directors. He's currently building a mine in, in Africa with his company Orzone, and he was with uh, a Gold Corp as their, as their corporate development head for, for a number of years as well. Um, I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself. I've been, I've been in, um, in, in the business here for, for about 25 years. The last eight um, was with the, a large development company called Western Copper and Gold, advancing a project in, in Northern Canada up in, up in Yukon. I was head of corporate development uh, there. Um, Penny Jasky is in, in Australia and uh, was formerly with uh, Rio Tinto in, in uh, uh, various community roles. Very happy to have her on board, making sure that we're doing everything proper um, with our communities and, and, and making sure that the engagement is, is constant and, and proper. Uh, Eric Zoncher, um, rounding out the group, he's also a geologist. So we've got two geologists on, on the board with Craig and Eric. Um, Eric's been a longtime analyst and uh, the last six years he was with, uh, ran the research department for, with international company called Canaccord Genuity. So our, our technical team, and this was something that I was a little concerned at, you know, with COVID, uh, our ability to travel to, to Australia is, you know, right now, obviously a bit limited. Uh, thankfully, Peter is, is um, leading our technical efforts um, in, in Australia, and he's assembled a, a team or helped me assemble a team as he mentioned on the ground, that that is beyond what I could have expected. Uh, we've got a gentleman named Matt Hernan who actually live, lives on one of the tenements and he was formerly with the Ballarat mine. And he's built out uh, a, a team of about eight to 10 people who are, who are running our, our maiden program right now. Thankfully, I've, I've got Chris Leslie, who's up uh, in Vancouver with me. Um, he's, he's, he's very familiar with, with the area, though he had to come back to, to Canada um, with his family. Uh, when COVID hit, he, he got his PhD in, uh, uh, at CODES in, in Tasmania, um, but is, has experience in the Victorian gold fields and he's worked there. So he's coordinating things from the Canadian uh, side and, and Peter is providing his input, of course, from the Australian side. So very happy with the technical team. A little bit about our shares, and we talked about that, um, that you know, Petrotherm shareholders will become 57% shareholders of ours. We've got about 60 million shares uh, that are out. Our share price today is, well, I think it's a little above 49, but about, you know, around 50 cents, which gives us a market cap of about $30 million Canadian. And importantly, we, we have um, a good balance sheet. So we've got over 10 million in the, in the bank now. Uh, just roughly, we're, we're anticipating putting about $6 million into the ground this year into two phases of um, of exploration. Phase one will take us to about July, and then phase two will, will be for the balance of the year. Both, both will be about a $3 million spend. In Australia, many of you are, are from Australia, but uh, you know certainly is a, a mining friendly jurisdiction. Um, Victoria has had some challenges in the past with uh, um, some of the relationships, but have made some great strides over the last number of years with their traditional owners, um, allowing for a clear permitting system. It's bogged down a little bit right now, just because there's so many uh, applicants, um, uh, you know, with the staking rush going on. But thankfully, we, you know, we do have good access to workers and, and we are able to drill virtually year round. And I won't go through this in detail, but I mean, the, the gold fields themselves, you know, 80 million ounces have produced there. The majority of that, I think 60 was between 1850 and 1920. Um, and then it was a tale, uh, you know, that, that wasn't really that great for, you know, almost 100 years from there. And, and until, of course, Fosterville made that discovery in, in 20, uh, 2016. And this is what we're looking for. So if you look at, um, you know, this is a slide from the Kirkland Lakes uh, website. If you, if you look, they've got over 2 million ounces at 50 gram per ton. 
Um, and this is this is the big size of the prize, or this is the size of the prize that, that we're 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 hoping to get. So the you know that's that's um, the carrot at the end. Uh, the knock on the region is is that's the only major uh, discovery of that type in the in the area. Um, and Peter's gone through the the four projects that we have that that are in orange here. Um, but I'll go through them just a little bit as well. So, you know, Glen Fine at the bottom here is our most advanced project. That's the one where uh, we have a drill on right now. Ballarat West um, is indicative of, of the region. So despite the fact that between the Ballarat mine and, and Clunes mine and others within five kilometers, there's been 17 and a half million ounces of gold um, that have been produced. Yet on Ballarat West, our, our tenement, there's been bas basically little or no uh, exploration. And the reason for that, it's, it's under shallow cover. So, you know, we're very excited about that. It's early stage. We hope to get the uh, exploration, uh, exploration license on that in the next uh, month or so. And eager to see what that might offer. You and Grun up north, we we have done some some mag work and uh, are about to embark on um, some further work in the next month that Peter outlined shortly. And then the last project we have is Silver Spoon, and this is probably the flashiest of the region, just simply for its location. So what you see in in um, just off to the side there, hopefully you can see my. Uh, my uh, cursor, you see the Fosterville mine, it's about 10 uh, kilometers away. Uh, what you see in blue is, is, is owned by uh, uh, Kirkland Lake. And, you know, so we're touching Kirkland Lake on one side, you see the purple on the other side. A couple of years ago, Newmont, the largest gold company in the world, also like the region came and acquired those tenements. And what's getting all the attention right now is, is the area that is shaded in red. It's called the North Central Victorian um, Ground Release Tender. So it's an auction um, that's uh, going on right now. It's had a lot of um, interest and is put, a, put out by the Victorian government. We'll find out who will, will be the winners of those auctions. We were supposed to find out last month, so it's hopefully pending. Um, and the rumors are it could be a, a $50 million type of earn in. So a lot of uh, activity in the area, not, not just in the gold fields, but right around our, our project. So what you see on the map there um, is about $200 million worth of exploration has been identified for 2021, including Kirkland Lake, um, who have who've said already that they're going to put 85 to $95 million uh, into the ground this year. So while we hope we certainly are, are, are the ones who, who get the next uh, discovery, uh, the reality is that, that any other discoveries will, will float the boat of the, uh, the region. So um, with that, uh, Peter, I'll get you to, to talk a little bit about uh, our plans of, of each of the properties. Thank you, Chris. We'll start with the Glenfine project, which is a joint venture that we've established uh, with Cape Clear Minerals, uh, which occurs just west of the, the main Ballarat line of workings. Um, and we have to, I don't know if you can see my cursor, to the southeast, we have a, a mine there um, called uh, Baringa, which is over a million ounces. And then up to the, just out to the east, we have, um, we have the, the, uh, the Ballarat line of workings, which Chris mentioned, you know, is one of the major mining historical mining centers with Ballarat itself generating over 13 million ounces and the region in general about 17 million ounces of gold. So it's a highly um, um, or auriferous zone. The tenements themselves you can see have a very uh, have a linear shape to them. These are the tenements outlining in red and it follows a domal structure that we can see in the gravity. This colored image here is a gravity. This dark zone is a, the sign of a dome. That dome acts a bit like a bow of a ship in the water. And around that bow, we're finding um, gold zones occurring. And we see gold occurring along the western margin and eastern margin. And that gold trend occurs for uh, collectively over, over 30 kilometers. So there's a very long trend of gold. It's associated with the contact of that basalt dome with the surrounding sediments. And it has a lot of similarities to the Stool Gold Mine. The Stool Gold Mine out to the west of Victoria has produced over 5 million ounces of gold and the subject of a recent new float. I hope you can pin to mine again there at Stool. So there's a great opportunity for Stool style gold, but also in the surrounding sediments, particularly on the eastern side of, the, of that dome or structure, we have high grade reef gold that's been mined historically, uh, most notably at Glenfine, the Southern Star here, and uh, and then another other, another working such as British Banner, which which historically there's little known about it, but the, we know from our ground operations that it's actually quite extensive uh, 
uh, surface workings there. This area too is also known for a lot of deep lead mining, which is, uh, which is really mining the ancient gravel beds that occur um, throughout the region and it's very auriferous. And a lot of those deep lead mines identified reef systems in the floor of their deep lead, which have led to uh, discoveries of new reef systems. We have a diamond rig currently operating at, at Glenfine. Um, it's following up, at, I'll just move to the next slide here, which probably provides a bit more detail um, of that zone. This is a, a zoom in of that, that zone. At Glenfine here. So at Glenfine South, historically, the mine generated just over 40 ounces of gold at about 16 grams per tonne, so very high grade was found um, from deep lead mining. They found a quartz reef system in the floor of their deep lead and began reef mining. It's only been mined down hundred meters vertical and not for a great length of strike. So that, that mineralization um, is open at depth and a long trend. In more recent years, uh, I joined venture partners, Cape Clear Minerals, who we're farming into to earn a majority equity where we can earn up to 80% by spending $3 million drilled some targets just to the south of those Glenfine workings, about 800 metres to the south, and intersected what they call their Reef 2 system. And it has some really nice numbers, look at 3.1 3 metres at 6, including a metre here at 9 grams per tonne, another metre at 11 grams per tonne. So there's, there's a consistent reef system there too. So the rig at the moment, though, is drilling for extensions of Glenfine and looking to link up the reef systems from Glenfine to the Reef 2 system. And from that, we hope to be able to, you know, actually identify some initial resources here, which I think is a fantastic start for the company. There are, these are big structures that occur on, and uh, there's every potential that, you know, we could find that, you know, a multi-million ounce deposit long trend or at depth, such as occurred with Kirkland uh, at Fosterville. You must remember that Fosterville had been operating for over 30 years before they found the Swan Zone. So you never know what may lurk at depth or a long trend. To the north here, we have the British Banner Workings, which is another, series of historical workings mined around the, um, the turn of the century. And there's been almost no drilling there apart from some, from re some recent drilling. And you can see here, for instance, this hole here, CCD01, 3.8 meters at nine grams, including a meter at 23 grams. And that's literally, that's really about the only hole that's been drilled there. So that rig that we're, we're currently, it's currently drilling down, down south here and it's drilled today about four or five holes, will shortly move to, to help define initial resources at Glenfine will move to the north and can start work at British Banner following that trend. But this whole zone between British Banner and Glenfine is very prospective uh, with a, a number of historical workings. So the aim is to explore that whole zone and continue, continue on to the north and to the south. So I suspect that rig will be, be running um, for, for most of the year in this area. As briefly mentioned, the company's drilled to date, I think about four holes. Those holes are being cut as we speak and uh, the, in, the um, analyses are going off to the lab uh, for analysis. So I, I suspect, you know, I'm sure in the, in the, in the coming weeks and, and early in the next couple of months, we'll, we'll start seeing results coming out from this, from this very exciting phase of drilling. I'll move up to the to Ewan Green, uh, which is uh, just west of the Weatherburn Goldfield area. Weatherburn Goldfield itself has generated over 140,000 ounces of gold, mainly from alluvial workings, although there's some historical reef workings. And the reef workings themselves were really only um, down to the water table, down to 20 or 30 metres depth. So there hasn't been any real modern exploration underneath those reef systems. These little red dots we can see here, many of the old historical sites and many historical workings that occur in the North Weatherburn area, which is we have all under licence. But importantly, we have a large area to the west, which has really had almost no exploration so because younger cover sediment uh, blankets this western zone. And that cover sediment in many areas um, it may only be two or three metres thick, it may be up to 30, 40 metres thick. So for a lot of it, it's, it's quite shallow and it's really amenable to modern exploration methodologies. Apart from the Kirkland Lake Swan Zone discovery, the other good news for Victoria in recent years has been Catalyst Minerals or their, ex their exploration north of Bendigo, following the same mineralizing trends at Bendigo to the north, where they go undercover. They have found through, through drilling and using um, trace element detection methods, uh, using really arsenic as a pathfinder to find primary gold resources, have made a number of discoveries, uh, most notably Tandara and Four Eagles prospect. And that's, that's sort of shown, I guess, been uh, shown the way to other explorers that, you know, we can, they're actually, 
ways we can explore now using modern exploration technologies to explore undercover. And it also demonstrates that these covered areas are just as prospective as those of outcrop, which have been historically mined. So we, we, we should see, you know, multiple tier one deposits being discovered in these covered areas. The western side of, of uh, the whole western half of, of the Urine Green project is under shallow cover. It's a large area. We're talking here, the tenement area is over 680 square kilometers. Importantly though, we can see, this is a magnetic image, the colored image you can see below it. And it's a bit like a, an X-ray. It gives us an idea of the structure of the rocks. And we know that the gold that occurs in these areas relates to major faults which are the feeders or, or, or the conduits in which the gold bearing fluids migrate up into the surrounding sedimentary rocks. And these major conduits, we see several of these running through, through urine green. The one here, this one here being highlighted in red is what we call the golden jacket fault. Just in board of that major fault is an historical mine, the golden jacket mine, which it's only small, but it, it, it was mined in the depression years in the 1930s. A farmer had found a little bit of quartz float depression years and sort of producing it, but incredible grade, 250 grams per tonne. It's never been a drill hole underneath that little reef system. So that's, you know, it's got amazing potential. And as you can see from the magnetics, that structure trends for many kilometers through our tenement, probably about 30 kilometers through our tenement. So that's really hasn't been explored. Just off our tenement, we have the nine mile deposit, which was mined uh, uh, around the turn of the century and that produced 15,000 ounces of gold, about 15 grams. And that's open to us, right? So we know that structure's mineralized. In recent uh, weeks, we've reflown this area with uh, detailed airborne magnetics to get a much better feeling for the structural controls that occur and to, to try and locate the fundamental faults which are driving uh, the mineralization trends. We see out on the western side, uh, a number of key parallel trending structures to the northwest. So these structures running through here too, are like have a very good chance of being mineralized. They're all under shallow cover. And indeed we have the, the old Moondyne workings where there's very little records shown, but of the one or two crushings that were recorded by the government register um, back in the 1930s again, grades there are around 12 to 15 grams per tonne. And we know those old workings through our mapping work extend for over a kilometer. So they're not, not, not minuscule by any means. So quite, it's quite an extensive zone of mineralization there, but just not recorded in the public register other than a couple of crushings. So we know this trend is mineralized. We have this golden jacket trend too. So these are very exciting areas. And with modern exploration uh, methods, we can explore these areas fairly cheaply and cost effectively and in a timely manner. The company now is looking to put a, a rab rig out in these areas where we're gonna do some regional rab style drilling in and around these known occurrences and along these major structural corridors which focus gold mineralization to locate new areas and define extensions of the known mineralization. That shallow drilling will then be followed with deeper RC and diamond drilling of the reef systems that, that we, we find. So I think this Eurogreen uh, project, you know, has tremendous potential. Um, there's some um, and great upside, you know, to see unfold um, throughout 2021. Moving uh, back down towards the Ballarat zone, we have another new land holding, uh, Ballarat West. We can see the Ballarat workings out here to the east. You can see my cursor, which uh, we mentioned, you know, produced over 13 million ounces, but also importantly to the north, we have the Creswick deep lead fields, which are these red and blue dots through here. Those deep leads were some of the richest deep lead alluvial mines anywhere in Victoria, producing, you know, one to two ounces a ton and, and many hundreds of thousands of tons. I think collectively about two and a half million ounces of gold. Just east of our tent, we have the Ballarat trend which produced over 30 million ounces of gold here and to the north the Creswick fields which produced 2.5 million ounces of gold mainly through alluvial gold and then on the other side the Clunes field which are between alluvial and reef gold systems uh, generated 1.5 million ounces. Indeed reef mining counted for 1.1 million ounces of gold there. The other important thing I think you should really see about this, this area is we have these important gold trends just to the south of a tenant which are standing in a parallel fashion to the north, and then they stop, or they, they, they make it across into our tenement, but stop. And indeed, some there's a couple of these deep lead mines here um, have produced, um, in the case of the Haddon lead system, produced over 100,000 ounces of gold. And then we see another deep lead system operating here. And the reason these gold minings stop here is simply because the cover thickens. And uh, 
We lose the outcrop and, the, and it's covered by a shallow, shallow basalt cover and sediment, which in many areas may be you know, 10, 20 metres thick, but in other areas may be up to 50 metres thick. But with modern exploration technologies, we can, we can explore through those, that shallow cover and look at the prospective bedrock below. When we go back and look at the, the historic uh, records from the deep lead mining that occurred um, in the southern part of this tenement, we actually hear descriptions of reef systems being identified in the floor of their deep lead mining operations. And that in fact, some of the best alluvial gold that was one found was actually found adjacent to those quartz systems. So presumably these quartz systems are the source of that gold. So that's very encouraging to know that we've got reef systems occurring here that haven't been drilled. And under very shallow cover, we're talking, you know, 20, 30 meters of cover there. So very easily accessible by through a drill rig. I think the important thing to mention here, you can see these gold trends, this North Northeast gold trend, Ballarat through to, to the Creswick area. Over here, then another parallel trend, Clunes coming down to the North or to the South South West. We've got this trend through here, which is sort of in line with Clunes, and then another trend through here. So as a geologist, we, we, we see these sort of multiple parallel trends. We call this sort of an initial on style array. Uh, you would think that these, these structural trends will continue through our tenement area and uh, could potentially um, you know, be the source of, of major gold. If you think you've got 30 million ounces of gold, well, collectively with, with Creswick, um, you know, it's over 15 million ounces of gold here. Why do, you know, there's every chance we could see a similar sort of gold trend running through here between these deep lead mines and the Clunes field. So I think this is a very exciting area. As Chris mentioned, uh, this, this license is um, still an application phase. But it's very close to being grant. All the approvals have been, have been issued other than the final sign off from the minister. And we think that should occur in the next month or two. So I think we're very close to having this license granted and we can really begin grant operations. And what I think is, is an amazing land holding next to the one of the world's great gold mines. And we've got all this virgin territory to be explored literally you know, within a stone's throw of, of, of existing, existing uh, world-class mining. Finally, we'll talk to you about the Silver Spoon project, which is situated between Fosterville here and uh, Costerfield, operating Costerfield Mine, both uh, owned by Madeleine Resources. So strategically, it's in a, in a very favourable location. And in this northeastern area too, of course, we need to mention Bendigo, which is um, you know, so the site of the most extensive reef workings with over 22 million ounces of gold won. We have this area here, whilst it's you know, very close to these known world-class deposits, has only been lightly explored through the same reason the other areas we have acquired is, isn't that that it's there's very limited outcrop and the old explorers really could only explore in areas of outcrop. These blue dots we can see treading through our license area here are old historic gold workings, the small shallow alluvial diggings, but um, we know that you know they haven't really been tested in depth and there was some limited coming exploration out to the west with some soil sampling, most notably the discovery of what they call the Crosby Prospect, where we have an arsenic and soil anomaly extending over a kilometre by 300 metres. And some of those arsenic anomalies, some of those samples to actually return gold close to a gram in soil with the rocks. So that's, that's very high numbers. And you've got to remember that Fosterville started as a gold arsenic, you know, arsenic rich mine. And we're seeing high arsenic here, and we're seeing gold, and uh, that hasn't been drilled. So we're very excited too about the Silver Spoon prospect. And we, you know, we're looking, we're hoping to have that license granted in the coming months and being able to get on the ground and do some drilling in what's a very exciting jurisdiction. So I like to think you can see there we've got a real project, a very big portfolio. You know, there's going to be years of work ahead of us. We're drilling um, advanced sort of reef positions, and there's every chance of success in the near future. I'll pass you back on to Chris. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, so obviously very, very active and exciting times for us right now. Uh, and you know, if we're going back, we you know, we did the acquisition or we closed it off in, in November. Um, we raised our money in December. We rebranded and uh, um, got all our operational things up up to speed early in the year and uh, started drilling about a month ago. So we're, we're, we're just in the early phases. And as Peter said, we're, we're hoping in the next couple of few weeks, we'll, we'll get our first set of uh, drill results uh, coming out and that'll be from the Glen, uh, Glenfine South area. Um, and then we're going to start with, with more work on more drilling up in, up in Ewan Groon here very shortly. So, I mean, the plan is 
to, to work on Ewan Grun and Glenn Fine uh, between now and say July. And, and that's what we're calling phase one of our, our drill campaign. At that point, we'll, we'll see what kind of results we have. Um, and hopefully by that point, we have our, our, the exploration licenses for the other two properties as well. And we'll rank and prioritize uh, what we have because we have a quite, quite a big length land package and then launch our phase two program for the balance of the year. So um, lots of news should be starting to flow here uh, shortly. So yeah, just a little bit on the investment side. Um, if you look out back, we're about a $30 million market cap right now. I put a basket of companies, some of you may recognize in there. Not all are direct comparisons, but you, you see we, we have a room to run here. And um, you know, with, with some, some marketing, getting our name out, um, we know we're definitely the, the new kids out there right now. Um, but we should we should float into into that uh, that range, and those are market caps in Canadian dollars. And you know, one of the case studies that that we look at um, from last year was a company called Fosterville South, which had a similar land package that we had. Uh, they IPO'd in about April. And you know they got very lucky um, in that they had some good good results uh, early on. Maybe that wasn't luck, but they you know gold hit to two thousand dollars an ounce, uh, and they got up to a three hundred million dollar market cap. I mean they have, and as well as the market moved back, but there's still about a you know well over a hundred million market cap as well. So certainly a lot of upside, and um, certainly that'll be amplified should should we get some good results as well. So just to to, to close off here, uh, you know the mantra that that Craig uses when he uh, is evaluating an exploration project is, you know, what is the size of the prize? What is the cost of the test? And, and what is the chance of success? And, and in this case, the size of the prize is as good as it gets in terms of, uh, of a discovery, the uh, Fosterville style, you know, the highest grade, um, the highest margin mine in the world. And the cost of the test is pretty reasonable. We're in a good jurisdiction. We have access to workers. Um, and we can get onto, onto land fairly easily. And the chance of success, I mean, Peter said it right off the top, um, you know, there's been 80 million ounces uh, mined from the area or produced in the area over the years. Um, geologists in the, the Victorian survey there believe there's an additional 80 million yet to be discovered at lower depths. So with that, um, I just want to thank you for, for listening and, and coming in. We'd, we'd be happy to, to be in touch with you to answer more questions. Um, we can be reached directly, info at outbackgoldfields.com. I'd like you to direct you to our, our website. We have a lot of other videos and, and uh, uh, information on that site. Um, and again, we're, we're trading on the Canadian Stock Exchange now, um, as well as the OTCQB. And we look to be on the TSX uh, Venture Exchange here in the next few weeks. So with that, thank you. Welcome to the Outback uh, family, so to speak. And uh, um, hopefully you'll stick with us uh, for the ride here. Take care.